Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thor, Love and Thunder, finally watched it today. Um, I have been ex waiting to watch this movie for a pretty long time. Uh, really highly anticipated film. And I know that there's been some negative comments regarding uh, Natalie Portman becoming uh, like, you know, Thor like power, having Thor like powers. Uh, but I think it is the same way in the comics. And to be honest, even though the way it happens, I wasn't the biggest fan. How they finally ended it, um, I, I was okay with it. To be honest, it isn't a big deal for me. It's not a big deal breaker and it didn't stop me from enjoying this film at all. So no complaints from me in that regard. Um, even though it kind of, it, you know, Twitter especially is a really bad um, way to uh, get into stuff and even, even other social media for that matter. But um, I'll be honest, I enjoyed this film. Um, highly anticipated, like I said, I'm pretty sure COVID has had a, um, a big hand in reducing the, uh, sorry, in increasing the, uh, the, the gap between 2017's uh, Ragnarok and this one. Um, I must say that um, I, the world of the MCU post, um, post uh, Endgame doesn't really do it for me as much as it did before that. I think it was a huge climatic film, uh, Endgame, and after that, well, I, do, I did love the Spider-Man movie quite a lot, but it just feels a little bit, uh, I don't know, I don't know what to say. I think it's lost a, lo a lot of its luster, to be honest. And like I said, it's not that I didn't enjoy the latest Spider-Man film, uh, No Way Back Home. Uh, and I definitely enjoyed uh, the um, uh, the multiverse movie with uh, Doc, uh, Doctor Strange and a bunch of the others as well. But I don't know. Um, I think the, the MCU is really going to miss Robert Downey Jr. And really going to miss Chris Evans as well. Um, I think um, you know it's it's they're going to really need to do, do they're really going to need to do something to replace those kind of characters uh, with charismatic actors and um, and characters to be honest. But overall, I also feel that the uh, the movies have kind of lost the the pull for me. Whereas I couldn't wait to go and watch a movie uh, from the MCU. Now it is like. Eh. It's like, okay. But yeah, I, I did want to watch this quite a lot. So, 2010 American Superhero film. Quite funny. That is actually one of my complaints that it's, a, to be honest, it's a little too much of the humor compared to what I would want to see. And it is a sequel to Thor Ragnarok, which came out in 2017. It's the 29th film in the MCU, directed by Taika Waititi, who, to be honest, I like his role as the comedic relief kind of stuff, but... You know, uh, there's a little too much comedy in the film uh, for me to actually enjoy it as a superhero film. I do enjoy some of it, don't get me wrong. It's just that maybe tone it down a little bit. Uh, you also have uh, Chris Hemsworth, excuse me, returning as Thor. I'm a little bit sleepy, excuse me. Uh, Tessa Thompson, Jamie Alexander, Russell Crowe, Natalie Portman, and Christian Bale, who comes in as the villain. And... There is the biggest problem. <laughs> the villain is not at all developed. I mean, saddened by the loss of his, I think his entire uh, race and then the daughter that he tried to preserve as much as possible and then him becoming the god, god, what is it? The god punisher, the god killer, something like that. God butcher, sorry. Uh, who's Gore, G-O-R-R, who's fighting Thor. Um, yeah, so that was basically, it's a big letdown when the villain is like, not even developed at all. Um, I did like the scenes, I like the special effects, I like all the, all the things, all the visuals is absolutely wonderful. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of that uh, romantic aspect. And I do like the fact that uh, Natalie Portman and uh, I mean like I like to see Jane and and Thor together so that actually is something that I was looking forward to but yes the ending I'm not going to excuse me I'm not going to talk too much about the plot I'm just going to talk about what I feel about this film Tessa Thompson as Valkyrie was like 
decent enough. I didn't really find anything much in her. Jamie Alexander is if um, I actually wanted her role to be much bigger. In fact, I wanted her role to be that um, instead of uh, Tessa Thompson's Valkyrie. But no complaints. I did not find anything to be too bad regarding her, regarding Tessa Thompson's um, portrayal. Uh, but Christian Bale's villain was uh, not the best. Like I said, Kaur Taika Waititi is uh, really funny, but again, in this kind of a film, they needed to tone it down a little bit. Russell Crowe, that was a surprise for me. I didn't actually know that he was in this film, uh, if I'm not mistaken. I don't remember actually reading anything about him being in this film. Um, I kind of keep try to keep uh, like you know information about these movies kind of less because I don't want to get spoil get like you know spoilers by mistake. So I watch the trailer. I watch a little bit about who's coming in. That's it. But I seem to have missed out uh, the fact that Russell Crowe's in it. He plays Zeus, and yes, of course, we get to see the 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 ending towards. I actually thought this character got killed off, but then they do show something um, towards the end, and he has a Greek British accent. Which I thought was really well done. It didn't sound anything like the Russell Crowe that I know. Uh, Natalie Portman. Natalie Portman was pretty good. I really do like her, and uh, you know uh, her role as Jane Foster. Although the fact that the, she got those powers very easily, um, just because Thor actually told Mjolnir at one point in time, please protect her at all cost, and then um, she is deemed to be worthy to get the powers. From the broken Molinier that's in that um, uh, monument kind of thing um, at uh, New Asgard, and you know she's suddenly becoming Thor. I was, I mean, that I don't know if that's how it's in in the uh, comics, but I wasn't the biggest fan of that. Oh, excuse me. You also have the Guardians of the Galaxy um, having a small cameo role. Oh, no, no, yeah, a little bit of a role in the beginning with Chris Pratt, Ken Gillian. Uh, Gillian, Gillian, uh, how do you, I think it's Gillian, Dave Bautista, Pom, Clement TF, Sean Gunn, I think Diesel and Bradley Cooper in their respective roles all appearing, uh, but in Bradley Cooper's role, just the voice, but yeah, and in, in Vin Diesel's role as well, just the voice. You also have Matt Damon, Sam Neill and Luke Hemsworth portraying the Asgard actors who are doing the the play of Loki, Odin and Thor. That's funny, I mean, like seeing Matt Damon in it. Of course, he was there in Ragnarok as well, but... Yeah, Melissa McCarthy is uh, playing Hela. <laughs> that was that was good as well. Um, what else? Uh, Idris Elba returning as Heimdall in the post credit scenes, um, basically in Valhalla and uh, Lady Thor going... I mean, sorry, yeah. Lady Thor going to Valhalla as well towards the end. Um, <coughs> what else? Oh uh, yeah, so there's supposed to be the Hercules character, so I'm guessing they're setting up the next villain of the of the MCU, or maybe only for Thor. I don't really know. That was surprising, and uh, it actually makes me more excited for the next film, to be honest. And I hope it isn't too much of a. They probably might get Taika Waititi in once again because I think this movie is a big success. Let's see how much did it make. Um, yeah, made on a budget of 250 million, 755.5 million dollars at the box office so far. And of course, with um, online sales, um, like I watched it on uh, Disney Plus Hotstar, and um, uh, of course, you know, DVD and Blu ray sales coming up. I will definitely, of course, get it for my collection. I have, uh, I have up to Thor Ragnarok, so yeah. I'm not missing no no I've got all three um, so yeah I will definitely get it for my collection but I haven't been buying DVDs for a long time so I don't know when I'm gonna actually get it um, I'm not sure when it is out I think it's it's out on blu-ray next month I guess in October um, and any other thoughts on the film yeah Hercules I don't know who's playing Hercules because it's a very small role let me have a quick check um, at least, at least. <laughs> a Brett Goldstein? I do not know this actor. I've never heard of him before. Uh, he apparently is a sports comedy called Ted Lasso, and he's actually a comedic actor. 
Twenty years after, I am no clue about this person at all. Anyway, um, yeah, I don't think I've seen him in anything else till now. Excuse me, I don't know why he is so sleepy today. <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen him in anything. I don't think I've seen any of the stuff that he's in. Um, so I wouldn't say I'm disappointed in this film. Out of the four, um, it, it, it's pretty enjoyable. That, that's what I'm saying. It is actually kind of enjoyable, but the fact is, I want to see a little bit more seriousness um, in the film because it's, I felt there was way too much comedy for a for a series about this darkness, about this guy losing his daughter, gaining all the superpowers, and then, excuse me, um, you know, killing. And then uh, killing a lot of people, uh, killing a lot of gods rather, kidnapping the uh, the kids of Asgard, and you know so all that was actually done with a lot of comedy. I guess a lot of people do like that, um, and don't get me wrong, I do like it in a little bit of moderation. Uh, the funniest stuff that I felt was when uh, um, the uh, you know uh, Thor's current axe is a little bit jealous of. The fact that he is seen with Molinier and that was actually funny. Um, that's about it about this film. I don't want to go through the plot per se, just a little bit here and there. Um, spoilers, of course, you you know what's going to happen towards the end. The kid was good as well. Um, the one uh, that is um, the god, uh, sorry, god butcher's dot actual daughter, who gets uh, reincarnated towards the end. Um, An, an eternity and he makes the wish to make his daughter come back revive his daughter instead of destroying the gods and uh, Thor the sad god becomes the dad god <laughs> that's what they say at the end anyway that was actually kind of nice towards the end but uh, I don't know what's going to happen in the next film uh, will we see Natalie Portman coming back will she get re resurrected back uh, as a human or maybe as a superhero like Lady Thor was um, I don't know, I've been rambling on quite a bit, but this is my thoughts. Uh, my review for this film is, I'll give it an 8 out of 10. Um, pretty enjoyable, but like I said, the reasons that I have a problem with it, um, I've already mentioned, but I do enjoy, I did enjoy the film quite a bit. So 8 is, I think, pretty good enough. Um, thank you guys. Um, I shall have one more review coming up before I go to bed.